Joining us now to discuss the Bitcoin price and analysis is Michael Sidgmore, co-founder and partner at Merchant Bank Broadhaven Capital Partners. Welcome to the show, Michael. So is today a fire sale for Bitcoin or a buying opportunity or are we headed for a leg lower? First of all, thanks, Christine, for having me on the show. Um, you know, look, I, I think the, the there's certainly a pullback. Maybe this, you know, the, the taproot upgrade to the Bitcoin blockchain was priced in. But I think I, I at Broadhaven focus on uh, our early stage venture business. So we're investing into companies uh, that may have exposure to tokens or we're investing in their equity. I think longer term, you know, I, I wouldn't be terribly concerned about pullback in, in Bitcoin prices. Reason why is because I think there's clearly been institutional demand. I think there will continue to be institutional demand from, from, from investors, both individual investors and then on the institutional side, I mean, proof points like Neuberger, Berman, BlockFi partnership, uh, Galaxy and Invesco intending to build a crypto ETF, um, iCapital putting Grayscale uh, on their platform. Mm -hmm. So I think we're seeing a ton of interest from the wealth management community, which over time, I think they'll go into the blue chip assets like Bitcoin. There's certainly been a, a lot of investment into the space, and that probably explains why we're here at the 60,000 level that we're at today. But what, what do you think is still causing the drawbacks on Bitcoin? Could it be China? Could it be a company like a giant like Twitter uh, saying, you know, they're not yet ready to in, in invest in Bitcoin? What do you think causes these drawbacks? Or it's just a healthy yeah. correction? Yeah, you know, look, I think one is it, it may very well be a healthy correction, right? I mean, I think the, the there's been a kind of 40% run up or so uh, in, in, in the past few months. So, you know, Bitcoin is obviously priced uh, priced in. And again, maybe some of these um, some of these things have been priced in a bit. So, you know, when I think about this, you know, I, I, I think that it perhaps it's priced in. I also think that people are very excited about some of these other uh, crypto assets and blockchains like Ethereum as well. I think institutional interest is there as well. So perhaps that's some of it as well. But again, long term, I'm, I'm not terribly concerned about mm -hmm. the blue chip assets because I think that's how institutions will dip their toes into the crypto economy is through big blue chip assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know, we just had Venek on, which launched their Bitcoin futures based ETF. Is that something that your your firm would ever be interested in? So we would invest into the company itself that's building that. We've seen a number of companies and there's the likes of Bitwise and 21 shares and newer newer companies like Alongside, which is trying to build a DeFi index. I think there's going to be a lot of innovation at the early stages, just like there was in the early days of the ETF market, right? I run a podcast called Alt Goes Mainstream, which talks about the mainstreaming of alternative assets, both for individual and institutional investors. I had the CIO of Bitwise uh, on. He helped build the ETF industry. And I think there's a lot of similarities between early days of the ETF industry when, you know, BGI iShares ended up getting bought by BlackRock. There was a lot of product innovation and companies being created to institutionalize the asset class. I think we'll see the same here. I think it's great that companies like Van Eck are building products out for both individual investors as well as institutional investors, because that's what helps more capital come into the space as you get more institutional capital coming in that reinforces itself on the retail side, given that there's just more institutional demand and then trust for this asset class um, as an institutional quality asset class. So I think what, what Van Eck is doing is great. And I think there's we're seeing a lot of innovation at the early stages of mm -hmm. companies that are building products for the institutional investor. But you wouldn't invest in the, the ETF right investor. at the moment because there is no. quite a, there's a hefty premium and there are other ways to invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> Correct, and we and we invest into equity at of early stage companies as well. So mm -hmm. so investing into a public markets product would not be a would not be a fit for us. Michael, what's your end of year outlook on Bitcoin? Yeah, so look, I, I think that generally Q4 tends to be a a time where Bitcoin ends up rising. I think we saw this kind of 2017 run up. Um, you know, I, I think again, th there's a lot of interest in the crypto markets from both individual institutional investors. I, I will say in talking to a number of wealth managers, there's a lot of interest from their clients in crypto assets, given that it's captured much of the zeitgeist. So I, I'd anticipate that people continue to be interested in these assets. I, I would think that, you know, look, the institutions are going to allocate to the blue chip assets. So Bitcoin is going to be something that they're going to look closely at. And I think I'd, I'd expect it to perform pretty well. You have a price target? 
I, I do not. I'm, again, I'm an early stage venture investor, so I'm not in the uh, I'm not in the business of of, of projecting uh, price targets. But look, I, I hope it goes up for for the space. I, th I think again, just more institutional proof points, and that shows that Bitcoin's a great digital store of value ends mm -hmm. up being a positive thing for the entire crypto. Economy. All right, Michael, no laser eyes yet for you. I get it. All right. <laughs> I'm, I live in a multi coin world. <laughs>